Hi, and welcome to the End Times Guy podcast. My name is Lee, and I'm just thrilled to have you along for the ride this morning. Are you getting a little concerned about the headlines? Are they starting to look like a circus, like a madhouse to you? Me too. Uh, The latest, a transgendered man, not transgendered, a drag queen, a man in a dress with lipstick was representing Nabisco for Mother's Day cookies. I don't know what a, a mentally ill man in a dress has to do with moms. Motherhood is a sacred gift from God. And there's something deeply, profoundly special about a mom. And man, oh man, to mock it and to disregard it in such a depraved fashion is just un- overwhelming. Um, we've got this 11-year-old boy dancing on stage in gay bars, appearing in magazines. I mean, he's 11. He hasn't even hit puberty yet. Uh, he's basically a puppet in the hands of very twisted individuals. We've got a bill going through right now that would prevent basically Christians from having any say in any of this. Now, there was a time back in the 40s and 50s, where the moral fabric of the Western world was such that the light didn't really bother them. You know, maybe they had to squint their eyes a little bit, but they were okay with the light. It was all right. But the moral fabric has been decaying since then. In the 60s and 70s, it was starting to go dim. It was starting to fall apart and tatter a bit. And they had to do more than squint. And you could hear them starting to grumble and complain. As as darkness increased. And by the 90s, uh, it wasn't really good to be a Christian anymore. Being a Christian was annoying. It was something you needed to keep to yourself. And it was actually changing. The fabric of society was changing to the point where they argued, shouldn't Christianity only be expressed in the church? It shouldn't be seen outside of the church. And darkness has been increasing over the last 20 years to the point where it's hated. It's hated in the Western world. And laws are being crafted. Here in Canada, there are laws in place where a Christian cannot practice law. A Christian cannot enter the Liberal Party of Canada. A Christian is restricted from speaking truth fundamentally. We have this human rights tribunal where if you speak the Christian truth, it can get you in trouble. You appear before court, you get fined, maybe jail, who knows. Because of the increase of darkness, the light is becoming more and more bothersome. Now, in John 1, we see that Jesus was the light which came down into the world. And what did the world do? It recoiled from the light. It hated the light. Its natural response was to douse it, to kill it. So we have to understand that in the Western world, those glory days where our light wasn't so bothersome, those those days are gone. And to shine the light of Christ will get you hatred. They don't like the light. They don't want the light. Now, as Western society is moving further and further away from the light and into darkness, their perception of their own deeds is getting more and more profoundly perverse and wicked. And if you're standing next to the light, you understand this, you perceive this, but they do not. They have moved far out into darkness and they do not perceive the wickedness of their own deeds. So you need to be aware of that. They are in utter darkness. And the light is something offensive. So we need to understand where their hatred is coming from. And our role in this society is to be light. Now, there is a whole brand of Christianity that is this syrupy, sweet, folksy, uh, go along and get along kind of cowardice. That's not light. Uh, It embraces tolerance. And, you know, loving and accepting everyone and doors wide open, arms wide open to everything. That's not love and that's not light. Light is truth, solid truth from the word of God. That's what the light is. We're not the light. You can put a a Christian label on yourself. That doesn't make you light. 
The light is Christ in us, truth in us. We have to shine the light of Christ, which is the truth of Christ, on this society. That comes at a price. That will get you (laughs) anger and hatred. People will see the light when you're actually being the light, and they will hate you for it. As this uh, Australian rugby player posted online that God will condemn liars and thieves and homosexuals and adulterers and all manner of sinners, that garnered him hatred because that is what light is. He lost his career. He lost his reputation. He, he's ostracized from society. You see, the, the society he's in has seen the light. And they've rejected the light. And that's exactly what the Christian life is. When you're shining the light of Christ, you will be despised. You will be rejected. You will be hated. This folksy, arms wide open, tolerance, inclusivism, syrupy garbage, that's not light. That's sheer cowardice. And and it's two-faced. It's a lie. And yes, the world will accept that because that is darkness. It is a, a shade of gray that the world can tolerate for a time. But the world will stamp out the remnant of light within that. This is no time to go along to get along. This is a time to be a light. And it's going to cost you. You're going to be hated. You're going to be despised. You expose their deeds. Their natural state is to recoil from you and to despise you because you show their deeds to be wicked. Now, what is the proper response to their hatred? It is natural for our flesh to return anger for anger, to return blow for blow. And you will be tempted in your flesh to retaliate with anger. I have to admit that when I see how parents are bringing their children to a school library to to let drag queens read stories to them, and it's been found that a couple of these so far drag queens are on the sexual predators watch list. Um, A mentally ill man in a dress who wants access to children. What could go wrong? (laughs) I, I shake my head and my natural response is overwhelming disgust and anger. It's just natural. But in our wrath, God's righteousness is not served. We, we have to leave it in God's hands. Our role in this is to be meek and humble and gentle. We are sheep. We are not wolves. We need to accept our place and leave vengeance to the Lord. Our job is to shine the light, to speak the truth. And when they retaliate, which they will, we have to be prepared to endure. Now, there is this uh, Walid Shuivat, an ex-Muslim who preaches that in the Middle East and in Northern Africa, where Muslims are coming at Christians with guns, the proper response is for Christians to get their own guns and to retaliate. And this is carnal, human, fleshly, and wicked. We cannot return evil for evil. That is not glorifying God. You see, when our eyes are on our own flesh, we will respond according to the flesh. But (laughs) the Bible is very clear. Those who walk according to the flesh will die. Those who walk according to the spirit will inherit life and peace. This is the joy in what I'm saying today. So far, it doesn't sound very encouraging, does it? Okay, you're saying we go to slaughter with our heads down. We're sheep. They're going to cut our heads off. This doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Well, there is a silver lining in this, and it is a big one. We walk like sheep to the slaughter. But where sin is increased, grace abounds more and more. Instead of looking to the flesh and how we should retaliate, look to God. Because he will supply you with superhuman grace. There are martyrs. There are children in our great Christian heritage 
who went to the flames, who went to the lions to be ripped apart, singing songs of praise. God gives us grace they cannot understand. God gives us joy. God gives us peace in the face of our enemy. Do not be afraid. Do not be alarmed. Do not be dismayed. Put your hand in the hand of God. He will give you the grace and the peace in every circumstance. We don't need to roar like lions. We need to walk like sheep and allow God to be God. When we take the matter into our own hands, when we in our own wrath and indignation lash out at the world, we are using the power of the flesh and we will lose. We will fail. When we go as sheep with our hand in the hand of the king of kings, it is he who fights the battle for us. We are given rest and peace and he, our redeemer, is strong. This is how God is glorified in our generation and in our time. Through our faith and through our love and compassion and silence in the face of oppression and wickedness and abuse. This is our time to let God shine. This isn't our time to retaliate and to make war with them. We are not warriors. We have to follow the head. We have to follow Jesus. And the heart of Jesus is always to bring glory to God. And think about that. How are we going to bring the most glory to God? When Jesus was brought before the courts and he was accused falsely, he didn't defend himself. He stood before them. They struck him. They mocked him. They cursed him. And he remained silent in, in the face of it. If there is a time where we're dragged before courts to give an account, don't fret. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. You don't need to drum up words. You don't need to, if you're going in with your own mind, your own rational arguments, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be fumbled. Uh, it's not going to work out. You need to go in waiting on the grace of God so that the Lord will speak the words through you. This is a time, dear brothers and sisters, where we need to have faith. We need to have trust in God and see what he will do. Don't think that there's hope in a government, in an institution, in a program, in a movement. Our hope rests in God. True unity is not in a person or a denomination or a movement. True unity is in Jesus Christ. When those of us turn to him, we have unity with one another. And that makes us strong. God bless you. And I pray and hope for your strength and endurance in these end times.